hello everyone welcome to a new video topic is corrosion in caustic surfaces i'll try to talk about this topic in brief in this presentation caustic environments usually are found in pulp and paper industry chemical manufacturing textiles refining and boilers the uh, difference in the boilers and refining and the other industries is that in these industries or other even in the case of refining also you will directly use uh, the caustic soda as the medium of operation so you will need that caustic soda for the preparation of the end products in these industries in case of boilers the caustic may not be used as the, is not used as the main uh, chemical for the operation but because of the uh, localized changes in temperature you will have similar kind of caustic environments formed in very uh, small small areas in a large boiler but the uh, way in which these uh, components undergo corrosion in caustic environments remain similar the mechanism will be similar usually you will have uh, some kind of a caustic service chart where they will give a uh, variation of the sodium hydroxide with respect to the temperature of operation and uh, there will be mention of which material be used in with what temperature range so uh, you can find more information about this in these uh, documents available with the nickel institute now to understand how this is actually formed let us take a look at the chemistry so this is actually related to the pore base diagram pore base diagram is a variation between the ph and the potential so potential is the electrochemical parameter of the material where it will tell you at uh, the at what potential and what ph you will have which chemical uh, which compound of that material formed so this is a nernst equation now in case of boilers you have uh, in the boilers you will have something called the steam blanketing in steam blanketing what happens is basically you will have a layer of steam formed between the water and the walls of the boiler because of this the small this area at the walls does not have enough uh, heat transfer efficiency due to this the temperature here increases a lot and the water evaporates to leave a very concentrated naoh solution over there and this uh, will bring the concentration of n and the in localized environment to that 50 60 70% naoh that was found in the chart previously in the other industries you will naturally have that high concentration used for the operational purposes so if in this case now you have carbon steel it the basic element in carbon steel is fe so the fe has a variation with the ph as shown over here now if you look at the potential found from and the uh, potential from the emf series you will see that the fe has around minus 4.0.4 at room temperature and at neutral ph so that about it's about 7 so that's why at the normal temperature the fe will remain intact at the put normal at at its original standard potential if we increase the ph at room temperature also at a high ph it goes into the region of formation of feoh thus if you have a carbon steel at a high ph you will have a film of feoh twice that is the ferrous of uh, that is iron hydroxide on the surface because this is now a kind of a passive film it will act as an active passive material which means that it has the susceptibility to undergo pitting and cracking as a result and the stress corrosion cracking as a result of the pits pits formed thus here the uh, behavior of carbon steel that it will always undergo general corrosion has now changed to the pitting corrosion 
so uh, if in this ca- case you have some kind of residual stresses due to processing or manufacturing operations or the uh, stresses due to operation so if you, uh, for example in boilers obviously there will be a high amount of pressure from the inside as in the case of others other uh, components as well in these stresses will add to the pitting and lead to cracking at the base of the pit in carbon steel now if uh, you have uh, instead of carbon steel you d- decide to use stainless steel then the stainless steel will also uh, will basically have a chromium oxide film on the top so these two are the pore bay diagrams for chromium and nickel but they are at a very high temperature uh, so let us only focus on the uh, compounds that are shown over here in this case when you have a stainless steel you have a chromium oxide film on the top so obviously the stainless steel will not have minus 0.4 it will have something more positive so let's say minus 0.2 because chromium oxide film will protect it from the uh, cor- from corrosion so at neutral ph and 0.2 you will have a chromium oxide film if you increase the ph this even at that same uh, potential the compound form is going to be entirely different so it will be cr0 uh, uh, chromium it will form some kind of a chromate if you have chromate formation it means that the chromium oxide film has reacted with the oxygen and it is uh, actually lost so you don't have the intact chromium oxide film you'll have some kind of a porous film from the t- on the top if you have a porous film then the uh, NaOH or the caustic environment NaOH is able to react with the Fe to form FeOH underneath and that will undergo uh, that will lead to corrosion of the stainless steel now instead of stainless steel if we decide to use nickel then at uh, in nickel it will be even more uh, some more some positive so at neutral environment it will usually have this oxide film that this oxide film is actually responsible for the protective nature of nickel and uh, the reason why nickel is the preferred material for such environments however if you ha- go for a high ph this ni3o4 will react with the hydroxides to give hnio2- at this temperature and if we change the t- if we change the temperature the region or the expanse of this area will change accordingly as a result the nickel oxide film will remain intact up to a certain temperature but above that temperature also it will re- undergo a reaction and it will be lost so the same mechanism will up- be seen as a seen in stainless steel with the underneath nickel undergoing reactions and hence corrosion now this this is how the electrochemistry is actually related to what happens at the uh, caustic environments and what what has actually led to the formation of the caustic surface charts now let's see how these potentials actually mean in terms of corrosion rate this is for this can be seen with the help of tafel plots you can refer to this paper this paper it is available and it is a very good paper where they have shown the difference in the tafel plots so this is for 50% noh so that is a very high uh, environment and this is for the 30% NaOH. Now, in this case, you will observe that this is the passive region. So, as I said, the passive region in stainless steel is chromium oxide film, and the passive region means that you have a good chromium oxide film at this potential. Now, at 0.5 potential, which was there, we found that the chromium oxide film was intact in the pore bay diagram. This is what we see over here. However, if we change the temperature, the plot shift to the right when the plot shifts to the right basically you are shifting the these points to the right these are the corrosion current densities so when you are shifting it to the right you are basically increasing the corrosion current densities with temperature and it means that your corrosion rate is going to increase the shape of the plot will change with respect to the concentration of the 
sodium hydroxide the shape of plot change can be seen so we know that it is changing there is some effect but chemically it means that if you see here the height of the the height is different in the lower NaOH so in 30% you have a larger passive film region and you have a shorter passive film area so shorter passive film area may mean that the chromium oxide film is going to pit early this is the secondary passive region secondary passive region means you will have another short passive film formed at the top so when you are increasing the when you are going to higher potential higher concentrations of NaOH the shorter pass the secondary passive region is also changing so electrochemically it means that the corrosion rate is also going to be modified with respect to the concentration in the NaOH so this means that when you are talking about the caustic service charts you will also have to see these kind of corrosion rates at those particular temperatures and those particular concentrations only then you will be able to match or estimate what is the reason why we should not use carbon steel in a particular environment what is the reason that if we do use stainless steel what should be the uh, uh, what should be the thickness of the material of stainless steel or of the component we can match the service chart uh, values to these kind of tafel plots and pore wave diagrams to get a more accurate estimate and design the components accordingly thank you please let me know if you have any more questions